and welcome to Gift on Fire. I am your host, Deirdre Weston, and I'm excited to be here today, and I'm more excited to see you here with me. I'm excited to be a part of a platform that allows artists to showcase their gifts and talents that God has given them through acting, through directing, through singing, through musicians, rap, all that. We are just so excited. And we have some special guests here for you today. So stay tuned and after the commercial, you will see our guests with their gifts on fire. HBN has a new attitude. We are changing, growing, and expanding to fit your style. The groove is on. Our program lineup is carefully crafted to meet the whole family's need. It is guaranteed to entertain, empower, edify, strengthen, and build its audience. Our shows are unique, cutting edge, and innovative to soothe your soul. Watch talk shows, cooking shows, fitness, family movies, travel, outdoor, and most of all, anointed ministries such as Rejoice, God's Faithful Disciples, Sid Roth, Manifest, and Joyce Myers. Picture TV on channel 35.2. Program your Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. Download our apps for iOS and Android. Log on to our website, whatever you have to do. Don't miss out on the excitement and be a part of the movement. HBN TV, the voice of Jesus Christ providing wholesome programming to its community. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Gift on Fire. We have a special guest with us today, and we're so excited. I think that a lot of the times when you talk about your gift on fire, you're talking about things that God has given to you, maybe uh, acting or singing or directing, which I mentioned at the top of the program. But sometimes your gift is on fire, and it has to be taken out and renewed again. And I think this is a part of, this story is a part of that. It's like, you know, you want your gift to expand and, and to grow and to allow God to keep pl plugging into it. But sometimes you have those setbacks and those setbacks are, do I stay back there or do I allow God to just continue to uh, fuel me, fuel me, fuel me, fuel me to, and so that I come back again? And I think this story is significant in that way. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to this young man. His name is Cleve Loeb. And Cleve has such a story to tell. And I really believe that many of you will be inspired by that. And many of you will be able to walk away and go, wow, that was my life. And I know what that young man is talking about, or that's where I am now. And what should I do to correct that? Ladies and gentlemen, Cleve Loeb. Hi, Cleve. How are you? Good. Blessed. Good. Blessed. Wonderful. Wonderful. Did I kind of get your story a little bit in terms yeah. of going back and and coming coming back, going backwards and then coming forward to what the plans God has for you? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. So what? Tell us what uh, you're, you're a young man. You, you're doing well. Uh, you're you're walking down the path of righteousness. You're 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 what 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 happened? So actually, um, I was born in church. You know, raised in the church. It's always amazing to me. This and um, <laughs> as, as long as I've known, as far as I can remember, uh, my mom, she was a, a woman of God. She mm -hmm. served God with all of her heart. And so, you know, it was uh, mandatory for us to go to church. Yes, and, yes. You know, I was so young that it didn't bother me. It's like part of my life. Right. And so I have memories of myself, you know, worshiping God at the altar, praising God at the altars when I was young, under, under the age of 10. And so what ended up happening was, you know, I got to a point in my life where I started hanging around with my friends, mm -hmm. having a good time with them. You know, I just wanted to have fun. Every day I would wake up with so, my friends up So to. what age was that? Because that's kind of normal what you're sounding right now. I'm just trying to locate where young people right now may be mm -hmm. listening and where do you not go. So what age was that? Here you are in church and then all of a sudden you start hanging around with who? Like friends that don't go to church, friends that, you know, that's where I want you to really dive yeah. in. Like, yeah. So that was like around middle school. So, okay, so you go to I middle school. 13, 13 14, 14, yes, you yes. Know, when, mm -hmm. when I was old enough to be able to make a decision and go, yeah. Well, go outside on my own. Gotcha, gotcha. You know, go mm -hmm. out and, and be gone for a couple of hours and, and make it back before noon. Before dark. Yes, exactly, <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, I would go out and have fun with my friends. 
And then it was around the age of 15 is mm. when I, you know, got involved with a group of kids that, you know, were doing drugs and they were into graffiti and whatnot. And so I started running around with them. But Clive, I hate to introduce, inter, inter, mm -hmm. but I, I just think that people are listening and it's like, that sounds like a normal story. Yeah. So if I interject, it's only because I know people that are probably going through that right now. Didn't you know is going to church that those were the wrong people to hang around with? So what was in your brain? Did you just want to be defiant or was it a lure? What, what, what happened? How? Because I always, the reason why I'm asking you and your yeah. story is so, so impacting to me mm -hmm. is because I see that all the time. And it's like, you have a choice. You have the choice to say, yeah. nah, I go to church. I'm not doing that. Or what is it? What is it that lured you at 15? And, I, and I'm going to be quiet and let you finish the story. Yeah. And, but I wanted to nip that in the bud because I just absolutely know that there's young people that are probably on the same road that mm -hmm. you were on. You know what? I think it was not being mature enough and not having enough wisdom to understand what I was getting myself involved okay. in. I was okay. probably it looked fun. Yeah, just trying to have fun. Just trying to have fun. So, you know, I was probably naive to the facts and whatnot. And so, you know, just trying to hang around, trying to be a part of the, the, the group. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know, okay. and then at the same time, you know, there's other people that were in my lives like you know, probably my, my older brothers, mm -hmm. my, my father was a gang member, you know, and so different stuff, different different roles, you know, that were in my life played a part in that, you know, oh, when, it, when it comes wow. to being influenced. Wow. Like, this is okay. Wow. You know, this, you know, I had my mom, you know, and, and she was the woman of God in my life, but everybody else were involved in the things of the world. And wow. so when it came down to it, it, it wasn't too much of a, of a big, you know, no, gotcha. no, it gotcha. wasn't too much of a big problem. Gotcha. And so, you know, I started getting high, started, started off with weed, marijuana, and as time passed, you know, I started getting involved in, in different drugs. Like, and, I got to ask you, what? After marijuana, it was probably like, started, I messed with alcohol and marijuana, and then, um, you know, just being transparent, some of my friends that were connected to other people, you know, start doing uh, primos, if you don't know what that is, that's marijuana mixed with crack, cocaine. Wow. I started smoking that with them. So you went there? I went there. And then after that, uh, methamphetamine. What? Yeah, I, I did meth as well for, you know, a good amount of, of, of years, probably about, you know, more than five years. By the grace I of was, God. Yeah, yeah, God, you know. And so I ended up down and out, down and out. Like it, how it, down did you get? To the point where I was losing my mind. I left home. I was living in the streets. Yeah, I was involved in, you know, gang violence. Graffiti, all kind of stuff. I, I was, I was at the, you know, it, it was multiple times where I actually had life-threatening situations. Seriously. Like, yeah, but a couple of times where you know I, I couldn't. And that's died. why, and that's why I want to get deep with this because mm -hmm. it's good to stay on the surface and say, well, I came out of this or whatever. But right. uh, I just know so many young people that need to hear your story yeah. and just as you're, you're going that way. Listen to what the young man is saying. It's not you. You can't tell me. I've read your story. Mm -hmm. It's not worth it, but to yeah. God be the glory, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, because, you know, when I was at that point where, you know, I had nowhere else to go and I, and I had no help, and I remembered my mom always telling me, you know, because throughout that time she would tell me, go to the recovery home. You know, Victory Outreach, the church that we're part of, they have a recovery home. So I remember when I was a Victory kid. Victory Outreach. Victory Outreach, mm -hmm. yeah. And so I remember when I was a child, I would see the recovery home, the, the men in the recovery home, Never thought that I would never end up thought, there. Yeah, that's you what know, I was going to say. You know, I, you know, as a kid, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I never thought I would end up there. But, you know, when I was down and out and I was at that point where, you know, when, when all else failed, I, I remembered that. Mm. I remember Even though mom. you were losing your mind, mom planted that seed. Yeah, the seed. And so I ended up going there. I ended up going to the recovery home. I graduated the recovery home. It was a 12-month commitment. I did the 12 months. I graduated. And within the recovery home is when God started to renew my mind. Is when he started to restore my mind. Did you pray that he would do that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Every single so day. So you wanted to get better. Oh, I needed it. I needed it. So you needed to get better more than you needed the drugs? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was to the point where, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't fun anymore. Okay. It wasn't, it wasn't fun it anymore. It wasn't fun anymore. And, you know, I was at the point where I needed a miracle. Wow. I needed a miracle. I needed God to perform a miracle in my life. And so I pursued it. I pursued so what, it. So what was your prayer like? What was your prayer like when you were down and out and you're in that recovery place? What, what, what was your prayer like? What did you say? What did you 
Did you humble yourself? Did you grab a Bible? Did you, what did you do? It, it, was, it was a desperate prayer. You know, a prayer that, you know, I prayed that God restored my mind. I prayed that his miracle working power would move on my behalf. You know, the Bible says that the same power that's in Jesus when he rose from the dead is the same it's power that's in, in us that's right. when we receive God and when we believe. And so I, I would pray that that same power so would you move knew the on word. my See, behalf. That's yeah. just it. You knew the word. Oh, yeah. You knew the word. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, God revealed himself to me through his miracle working power. Restored my mind, restored my body, and then he even started to unlock gifts in my in my life, unlock Gift. skills. Thank you. Yeah. This is. Ugh. And so it, it, it was. It was. It's, I'm a walking miracle. Amen. I stand here before you as as a walking miracle. Amen. Amen. Well, I you know I I, I heard that you also use your gifts through uh, ways of music and rapping yes. and different things like that. So we want to get a chance to uh, to taste a little of that as yeah. well. That's a, I, I, I love stories like this. And I mean, um, you could have been a statistic. Yes. I mean, because many are and many still are heading that way. But you, right. you are a testimony unto God that, that his miracles and his intervention, if you ask, mm -hmm. is always available for you. Oh, yeah. So that's oh, yeah. awesome. So we, will we get a chance to get a little taste of yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, we're good. <laughs> All right. So we're going to be right back. Hold on. And we're going to see... Something very special. God is in every line of my story, protecting me, fixing the broken, strengthening the weak, Resurrecting what is dead, reversing the curse, breaking bondages, and opening doors that no man can shut, all for his glory. God bless.
Yeah. Yeah, of course. Of course. Awesome. That is awesome. So did you write that when you're at your lowest? What, when did you get those words? Those words are significant. Yeah. I mean, they're definitely glorifying God and the Holy Spirit, by the way. When did, when did this song come about? You know what? Um, I actually went to a Bible college called the Urban Training Center. Okay. It's through the uh, Ministry of Victory Outreach. And what we do there is it's hands-on training mm -hmm. of ministry and it's hands-on training of hitting the streets, radical evangelism. We take Bible college courses there. And from there at that Bible college, God took me to all kinds of new levels from glory whoa, to glory. Whoa. And so from there, you know, I, I was like inspired. <laughs> I, I had a beat. And I was like, man. Oh, you had a beat. beat. So you had a beat. I, I found a beat. I said, man, I love this beat. Uh -huh. And I didn't have no lyrics. So I said, I'm going to put it to the side. And then it was one time when everybody else was doing their homework and I had finished my homework and I started working on the lyrics and it just came to me like that. Like God gave just me the work. lyrics. That's what happens. Instantly. Oh, I am so, I so awesome. I always yes. know that. So um, is this your first song, your second song? Do you have other songs that you, you want God? Because, you know, I'm a writer and, and what, I, what I do is... Um, I totally write off of inspiration. I mean, sometimes I can sit down and make myself write, but it just doesn't come out the same. So how do you, uh, do you wait for inspiration to come? Do you sit down and just, you know, ham the words out or how does that go? You know what? Um, it's just like that. God inspires me. It's just uh -huh. like a word of God. Right, like he right, places right. it in my heart. And there's only certain beats that I use. Like uh, I, I surf the web looking for beats. Okay, okay. And so when I find that one beat, I hold on to it. And then on, on God's timing, he'll bless me with the lyrics for that beat. And so I have like about, I'd say like seven songs right now. Wow. And, you know, they're all in here. They're, they're all in uh -huh, here. Uh -huh. right they they got to come out, yes. And, you know, so, you know, I have about seven songs. And that's not my first song. That's actually my, my latest song, mm. in it, which is my favorite song. Okay. And I feel like, you know, that's the... As far, you know what I mean? So far, that's the best song that God that's has That's nice. Well, me. it's good. It, so, uh, it's awesome. So, Cleve, what, what is going to keep you? What is going to keep you foot grounded? I, I know it's God, but, mm -hmm. you know, the devil's busy too. And he's got a plan, just like God has a plan for you. What would you say in those cameras to people that, you know, you, you're living a vision, you're bringing your vision to life, but... A lot of people can't get there. A lot of people don't have that. What, what do you want to say through your music? And what do, how do you keep grounded? And how do you know when you go out the door today that what keeps you not wanting to go back out there in the world? Well, well God is real. That's what I want to say first off, that God is real. His word is real. And in the Bible, it says that his, his word is alive and active. Mm. And so that's something that I hold on to. You know, and then the miracle work and power of God has been revealed to me. And so that's something that holds me down as well. But I would like to tell a lot of the young people out there that God is real, first of all. And second of all is that he's your creator mm -hmm. and he didn't just create you just to have fun. He didn't just create you just to have a cool project, but he created you with a purpose. And his plan is to prosper you, not to harm you. And mm -hmm. his plan is to prosper you. And then like that song says, he's trying to take you to new levels. And so there's a purpose for each and every one of your lives. And so that's something that holds me down. And so I hope that it's something that, that it sparks something within you when you hear this to understand that there's more to life than just a, a nine to five. There's more to life than, than to go out and hang out with your friends. But there's a purpose that God has given us to make a change in the world. There's a purpose that God has given us to be closer to him, to understand who our creator is. And so that's something that we have to know. That God has created us and he has created us with a purpose. And when you go deeper into deeper into deeper into the word of God and yes. into the presence of God, then you'll get to understand that purpose more. And there's no limits to what God can do. And so that's something that, you know, I want to share with you guys that go ahead and, and pursue what God has in store for your life. There's no limits for it. And so, you know, get started today. Get started right now, you know, and go after what God has in store for you because he has something very special and he will allow you to do things you never thought you can do on your own. Things mm -hmm. that you never thought mm -hmm. you could do, God will enable you and he will awaken gifts within you, talents <laughs> within you, and he will bless your life and allow you to become a blessing to everybody around you. And that's what we want to be. Yes. We're a blessing Ooh, to hallelujah. our God. We want to be blessed. Praise God, young man. Praise God. People in our, that are in our lives and that are connected to Literally, us. Literally, so. praise God. Just give you a high five on that one. That is awesome because you know you're not I, I was talking about young people and everything and sometimes we get caught up with the fact that you're young yes. but you know all the the, the prophets were uh, David was young you know they, uh, it, all the prophets they were young they weren't old people and God used them 
So you might looking at camera and I'm thinking minister to the young people, but hey, you're ministering to us. You're ministering to the old people because sometimes we get old and we get dumb. <laughs> Not all the time, but I mean, we, you know, and, and you know, but you have people like your mother mm -hmm. that uh, I, I just always believe that that story about having a praying mother or a praying grandmother, which kind of turns around the situations where young people are involved in. It's true. You got to have people around you that when you slip and fall, yeah. they're, you know, they're there to catch you. And they're there to, to, to be with you even in your ugliest days, you know, because I'm sure when you were down and out on that crack, somebody walked past you and go, he ain't no good. You know, he ain't up to nothing. When you were in the gangs, he ain't up to nothing. Nobody's going to really give you a chance. So when you were in the gangs, were, was that something, it's, was it hard to get out of the gang or was it a decision that you made to say, I'm not going to do this anymore? Well, it was like more hard mentally, you know, because it was like, already established as my so-called identity you know now the people that I were that I was connected to they respected me and so you know it wasn't too hard in, in that part mm -hmm. you know they respected me and respected my decisions and whatnot but um it was more like a mental thing okay and you keep mentioning that yeah you keep mentioning that so I'm just believing that it was it was it's your spirit man but also it, it's connected to your mind frame in terms of what do I want to do and where am I going to go? You know, and it's, it's, it's inspiring. It really is. Your music is inspiring. Your, your demeanor. And when I first met you, I was like, wow, you know, he, he looks like he's got it all together, but it's not the interior. It's, it's inside. Yeah. It's inside of who we are. And I know that all of us has a, have a testimony, maybe not as deep as going underground like you did, right. but the more that you tell the story like that, the more that we, I, I, I want to avoid it. You know, if I was yeah. a young person, some yeah. people, I was too scared. <laughs> it's like, I was too scared to do anything. So maybe fear stopped me from being as bad as I could have been before I learned the right way. But here I am and here you are. And I'm proud of you. And I thank you. And we'll be right back. In a culture where most people are obsessed with watching television, one cannot help but to point out the danger that lies within. Television has the power to alter the thinking of its viewers with subliminal messages that hinder the mindset of its audience by causing negative emotions that are detrimental to the soul. TV has the ability to influence life choices and distort a person's perception from what God intended it to be. Unless the true message of our Lord Jesus Christ gets into their hearing, some will lose their souls. Let's give them an alternative. HBN is called to clarify and illuminate the true light of his word. Join us and use television to broadcast the truth that will bring healing to the nations. For more information on becoming a broadcaster, please visit HosannaBroadcasting.com. HBN TV, the voice of Jesus Christ. And Jay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gift on Fire with our special guest, Cleve Loeb. And I know you enjoyed that awesome ministry that he did. And um, I just wanted to just say thank you for joining us. I mean, it's people like you that make our show very successful because of your, you know, your testimony and where you came, mm -hmm. where you came from. And we just cer certainly appreciate your candidacy, being candid with us and telling us the real deal, you know, because sometimes we skim across it and everything looks great and dandy. I mean, you're a nice looking young man, but, you know, through the fire, sometimes you come out of that fire and uh, you don't come out without getting burned, but right. you come out. So I just wanted you to have some last words with um, just 
making sure we didn't miss anything and talking about what, where you go from here, uh, what are some of your future events that you're doing, how do people contact you. I understand that you actually do shows and different things like that. Yeah. So we want to make sure that we bless you with, you know, just tell the audience where they can contact you. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, you know, I'm open to bookings for bookings for any church in Southern California and whatnot. So you can just contact me through my Instagram, which is LBC period. C-L-I-V-E. Again, that's on Instagram at L-B-C period C-L-I-V-E. Hit me up, man. I minister, you know, I do songs and it'll be a blessing to go out to each church, each and every one churches in Southern California. Awesome. And we need more men like you and we need more testimonies like you. And I pray, really do, your, your, your future will be as successful as the story that you told us today. And uh, promise me that you'll come back and yeah. tell us, you know, even more exciting news and, and things that's happening with you. You promise that? Yeah. yeah All right. Of you made a promise. You guys saw that, right? <laughs> of Thank you so much again for joining us. We'll see you next week on Gift on Fire.